Ooh, this is nice. Oh boy, you could not beat this good mood out of me if you announced The Rise of Skywalker Parts 2 and 3 or something. Bullet Train, fantastic. A thrill ride. One of the best movies of the summer. One of the best action movies we've had in a little while. Um, Top Gun and Bullet Train are carrying the summer as far as I'm concerned and possibly Nope as well, although us Brits will not find out until next week. It's still not out here, which is very frustrating and I'm trying my hardest to avoid spoilers, but thank God for Bullet Train just to ease the pain and the wait for Nope for just that little bit longer. Um, David Leach has had a string of misfires after John Wick, his directorial debut with Chad Stahelski. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Chad Stahelski went off and of course made John Wick chapter two and chapter three and the upcoming chapter four. And all of those, even two, which I'd say is the weakest, are pretty entertaining action movies. Although I do respect Leech for going off and doing his own thing and trying to make some original movies, as well as Deadpool 2, uh, all of them have been misfires to some degree. Atomic Blonde has an absolutely masterful long take action scene which is worth the price of admission alone and just shows off all of his skills as an action man, an action director and a stunt coordinator. <laughs> But unfortunately, the rest of the film is pretty dull and it suffers from a woeful script. Charlie Theron, Furiosa herself, um, ha had all the chops to be, you know, what was dubbed by many as the female John Wick. But unfortunately, the script lets that all down. Although, if you wanted to watch just that, that action scene in isolation after watching the movie at any time and you boot it up on YouTube, you're in for a treat. Deadpool 2 is fine. Um, it's not an awful movie, it's, it's, it's a good bit of fun, but I can't say I ever really think about it, even within the pantheon of the superhero genre. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's probably what I would say is the definition of, of truly mid. And I don't say mid as a negative, I just mean, you know what I mean, it's, it's average, it's fine. Well, that's just lazy writing. And then Hobbs and Shaw, I think, is probably the most disappointing of the David Leach run. <laughs> Uh, because I thought that could have been really something. I thought there were some really, really strong trailers for it. The action was still very good in the finished film. Perfection. But again, the story was lacking and that let the whole thing down. I really thought it would have been great to steer away from the Fast and Furious movies and focus on Hobbs and Shaw, two of the breakout characters from the mainline series, and their rapport could have been a lot of fun. It could have been, you know, one of the best buddy, buddy action movies in quite some time, and instead it kind of falls into the tropes of the Fast and Furious movies, the further into its runtime it goes, and then aside from that, it's like trying to be a poor man's Mission Impossible. It's, it's really not very good. And, and I say that with a heavy heart because, as I say, all three of David Letch's post John Wick movies I've really wanted to like. They've had some great marketing, and in all of them, there's been some tremendous action scenes. However, Bullet Train bucks the trend because not only do we get the stellar action that we've come to expect from David Leach, 
but also this one has a really fun story. It's fast paced and frenetic. You actually care about some of the characters that are on screen. It's funny. It goes off in directions that you're not anticipating. And it's just a really fun ride. You sure you want to talk this out? Not particularly, no. <sighs> okay. A lot of people uh, in response to my Grey Man review, which was pretty negative, said, you know, are oh, the Grey Man's a leave your brain at the door kind of movie. You're overthinking it, it had some fun action scenes in it, like, that's all you need. This kind of movie, Bullet Train, is as close to leave your brain at the door as I would be willing to allow. Uh, this is a proper leave your brain at the door movie, you know, this is a good action movie. The Grey Man is dull and at parts it's really slow and boring and having a couple of good action sequences in that movie and some great casting in Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling doesn't make up for that. Whereas this movie, I feel like, you know, whilst it's not an action classic and it can't quite live up to the hype of the first John Wick film, it's not trying to, it's its own thing and it's, it's very fun. Sorry buddy. <laughs> There's some great one-liners in it. Brad Pitt's character, who is kind of like an assassin who's trying to go through therapy and turn over a new leaf and find some luck in his life, is, is just really hilarious. Uh, Lemon and Tangerine, played by Aaron Johnson and Brian Terry Henry, are also standouts. You've got a great villain in Michael Shannon, um, and Zazie Bates is, uh, is, is a brilliant assassin as well. Uh, call me. Call me? Call me, please. I actually uh, Googled before this video how to pronounce uh, Zazie Bates and I found four or five uh, different answers, all of which conflicting. And then I found a video of her talking about all the times her name has been mispronounced, uh, whether in interviews or press junkets and the like. Um, although in that video, I was hoping that she herself would say how to pronounce her name correctly and she didn't and I was like oh no I've got all the wrong ways to say it in my head and I don't know the right way so I apologize if I got your name wrong and uh, call me bad bunny El Muerto himself in Sony Pictures upcoming Morbius train wreck <laughs> um, uh, was was really fun uh, I wouldn't say there's any cast members that really drop the ball in this. They're all pretty well cast, and the costume design for each of them is really stellar. This is a gorgeous looking movie, by the way. Easily Lech's best looking movie since John Wick. Um, there's some really stellar lighting, and the colors really pop, and the, the whole train feels like it has like a, com a complete vibrance to it that is really enjoyable, and it perfectly fits the tone that they're going for. It's also edited to perfection. There's some great uh, cuts and, and, and um, moments that, that harken back to earlier times in the film, particularly during the action scenes. Um, there's some great cutaway gags. The film just doesn't take itself seriously and it goes balls to the wall, both in the action sequences, the characters, the plot, and it's all the better for it. I didn't have a single bored moment in this movie. There's also some really great cameos, which I'm also not going to spoil, but what I will say is that these cameos are not the kind of cameos that we've become accustomed to, where they're building off of a load of lore, or they're trying to, you know, trying to pinpoint some nostalgia in you. They're cameos that are fun and surprising and work for the scenes that they feature. I wouldn't say this is necessarily David Leitch's best hand-to-hand -hand choreography or one-on-one -on -one fight scenes, but um, the movie's not really trying to top anything he's done previously, like John Wick or Atomic Blonde. And also, the fact that they're in a train carriage makes you know like the space in which they're fighting quite narrow. So surprisingly, a lot of the fights are over fairly quickly, uh, but that's not really what uh, what the entertainment value in this film is. It's all about the dynamics between the assassins, all the hijinks that are going on. Things just get progressively worse and worse for all the characters. Things keep going wrong. Plans are changing constantly. It's a really fun script, and. Uh, I, I honestly can't see how anyone who, who's a fan of action cinema would have a bad time with this one. I'm really glad that it was as good as it was because the first trailer with the BG soundtrack was awesome and then I felt like that second trailer wasn't quite as strong and it felt like it kind of spoiled 
parts of the movie, like Sandra Bullock pops up and is speaking to Brad Pitt in that trailer and you can just tell that that is from the end of the movie. What's happening to your face? Maybe there was a little head trauma? Maybe. And I hate it when they do things like that. Um, who remembers the amazing Spider-Man 1 trailer that had the post credit scene in the trailer? Incredible. Sony, just, just, just wowing us time and time again. Uh, but yeah, the, the second trailer didn't end up spoiling too much at all, really. Also, some of the assassins pop up very briefly, and from, from their parts to play in the trailers and the marketing, you'd think they'd be around for longer, and they're actually not. And uh, that leads to this, this wonderful effect where you don't know who's gonna go and at what moment. And whenever an assassin gets unceremoniously killed off, it's always pretty satisfying, and, and it keeps things really thrilling. I'd say that even though some of the cast aren't in the movie for very long compared to some other cast members, they're all used really effectively and they all had some really, really fun parts to play here. My standouts would of course be Brad Pitt and Brian Tyree Henry, the best thing far and away about Eternals. Uh, it was also just fun to see the cast of Atlanta try to kill Brad Pitt. Why not? Fantastic. Easy when you say it. One little prick from this, you know what happens. Yes! Your blood congeals, clogging your veins. I oh, said look. yes! I cannot recommend Bullet Train enough because we need more stellar action movies in the cinema that are not from the MCU, that are not even from DC Comics, that are not rooted in superheroes or franchises. We need more things like Top Gun, like Bullet Train, that are just really well made, really entertaining, and aren't asking you to, to, to learn a load of homework beforehand, or stay for some post credit scenes so that the next 10 movies are set up. This is just a really fun movie, you'll have a great time, get a big bag of popcorn, get a Tango Ice Blast, they're not paying me, I don't know why I've suggested that, but they're pretty delicious, so I would go for one, um, and, uh, and strap in and don't see it in 4DX. What are you, a madman? I, I gotta get off this train. A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. If you'd like to find me on Instagram, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can find me at, you guessed it, at fullfatvideos.